Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Burbio. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days with today's Burbio day 10. We'll take it to the 22nd of July and we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the Exchange GFS and ECF on Sons Bay Ranch around a couple of weeks. How the CFS? at the CFSB2 at the end of the video the next four weeks and that will get us uh, into the first half of uh, August. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that the first Muracy was our 6M upload and we've also released the extended European outlook with the ECMWF model uh, for the next 30 days slash six weeks. So check out those two videos if you'd like to see that. Please like and subscribe please. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. We've reached 13.9k subscribers so just around another 90 to go now get to 14,000 subscribers. Wow, incredible. Thank you so much getting us this far. Please give us a sub. Tell friends and family to subscribe as well and help get us to 14,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody. This video will bring you up to date with all our latest developments with Heatwave and I'll get on back to you in a second. But before I do anything else, I want to just say a quick hello to one of our younger viewers and fans. So I'm going to say hello to Abby. Hello to Abby and thank you so much for watching our videos. Abby's been a little bit poorly. I've been talking to Abby's mum, Emma, and uh, I know that she's a little bit uh, poorly at the moment. So uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, get well soon, Abby, and and uh, thank you for, for watching our videos. And, um, and yeah, you know, hello to you. And uh, I hope you're doing okay. And, uh, you know, I hope you're feeling better, better soon. And then we can say hello to Abby in the comments as well. That would be absolutely great. I know Abby would like to, you know, have a few uh, hello messages. So um, please, in the comments, if you can say hello to Abby. That would be absolutely lovely if you can uh, do that. And hello to Abby's mum, Emma, as well, uh, of course. And thank you both for, uh, you know, watching, liking uh, our videos. And, um... And I hope that things get better soon. Thank you so much, Abby. Right, okay, let's crack on with the video then. So we're going to start off with the weather warning from the UK Met. So we have the extreme heat alert for Sunday. Of course, we talked about that in yesterday's video. We have the extended to Monday as well. So extreme amber, uh, amber alert for extreme heat covering many parts of England and some parts of Wales. Uh, Valley from Sunday to Monday. Exceptionally high temperatures are possible during Sunday and Monday. Could lead to widespread impacts on people and also on infrastructure too. So this is Monday's alert as well. Exactly the same. Uh, just extend it out for another 24 hours again it's an amber alert for extreme heat and again they're saying exceptionally high temperatures are possible during say and monday could lead to widespread impacts on people and infrastructure so two days now uh, with an extreme heat alert amber warning whether that will be extended to a third day uh, on tuesday the 19th of july remains to be seen but certainly 17th monday 18th july are a couple of days that are well worth watching at the moment. So these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles and it comes weeks from London today. So red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off above average at the moment. Of course, we will see those upper air temperatures uh, becoming a little bit cooler through the middle part of the week. So it's a bit of a cool down starting to take place now. That's going to carry on in towards the middle part of the week. It's still going to be quite warm, but certainly cooler than it was yesterday, which was a hot day. And then we see still see temperatures rising up as we go through the weekend and into the early part of next week. I think the GFS on solves are possibly backed up the extreme heat uh, a little bit. There are still some ensemble members up here that are going for very extreme heat between 20 and 25 degrees at uh, 850 HPA. That's the kind of level that could get the uh, surface temperature close to 14 degrees. But I think generally the GFS numbers will pull back from that a little bit. Most of them seem to be clustering around there now, uh, which is between 15 and 20 degrees at 850 HPA, which probably gets the temperature to the mid to upper uh, 30 Celsius, which will still be very, very hot, uh, of course, but maybe not quite going to that extremity of uh, plus 20 to plus 25 degrees at 850 HP. However, there are still several on some members that are getting that hot. Now, as we go into the last week of July, there is a cooling trend as well, so that heat not going to be maintained 
uh, for more than a few days, and then we begin to bring the temperature back down again. Precipitation wise, it looks like there'll be lots of dry weather over the next week or so. Um, maybe a little bit more unsettled into the final week of the month. This period just here. So, again, not that much sign of a fungi breakdown within this ensemble graph, I have to say. But precipitation spikes here are relatively modest when all this hot weather is going on. And then perhaps just a bit showery after that. But it looks pretty dry, really, certainly for the next week to 10 days at least. Temperature anomalies show the chart to 20 of July going to be very substantially above average, not just the UK, but through most parts of Western Europe as well. And precipitation anomalies from the chart to 20 of July to be really dry too, so significantly drier than uh, normal. The latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that high pressure is dominating weather. Still, there is a weak cold front that's drifting south, so it will lower the temperature through the middle part of the week. Um, but that's coming into high pressure, you see. The main low pressures that would bring proper wind to rain, they're, up, uh, they're around uh, Greenland, Iceland, along with the jet stream as well. So this cold front is a very weak feature, but will be enough to lower the temperature. Right, let's start going through some chart data then. This is how the uh, UK Met Euro run. It's going midnight on Friday. So high pressure still in control. So it's just to our west. It's going to be mainly dry. Temperature will be a bit cooler. Over weekend, the high pressure posi positions over to the east of the country. That starts to pull up this very hot air from the south. It takes a little while through the weekend for that to happen, but by midnight, on uh, Monday, centre Monday, we have got plus 20 cells iceberg through that, crossing the west, so really hot upper air temperatures, and those very hot upper air temperatures are pushing northwards uh, as we go into uh, the 19th of July. This is midnight on the 19th of July. We have got plus 20 cells plus 20 Celsius isofer, uh heading towards southern parts of Scotland, actually. Uh, so this is an incredibly hot air mass. We may not reach 40 degrees quite, but, you know, uh, that's a very, very, very hot air mass that could easily get the temperature into the mid, certainly the mid-30 Celsius, probably the upper 30 Celsius. So we will be approaching, uh, you know, record hot temperatures, I think, with this. Icon uh, looks like that again. High pressure is going to be dominating the weather at the end of week and into weekend too. Gradually that high pressure slips eastwards, opens the door to that hot southerly from Sunday into Monday as the upper air temperature showing a plus 20 Celsius from there is pushing into southern England. We've got plus 25 Celsius from across northern parts of France into midnight on Tuesday. Seeing that very hot southerly southeast you flow fungi low beginning to about just to our south and southwest. As the upper air temperatures, they do look exceptionally hot. We plus 20 Celsius iceberg again into Norman England, plus 25 Celsius iceberg, just about making it into far southwest of England. I don't know if you can make that out, but plus 25 Celsius iceberg is just about getting into far southwest of England. And then that fungi trough begins to push northwards on Tuesday the 19th. Again, the upper air temperatures do look extremely hot. That could be a record-breakingly hot day on Tuesday 19th, which like, would depend how hot, you know, how uh, widespread the thunderstorms are, how quickly thunderstorms get going and whatnot, as, as to whether that would be a, a record hot day. But, I mean, Monday, uh, Monday Tuesday, looking extremely hot here uh, with the model output today. GFS Midnight Run looks like that. Again, high pressure is well and truly in control of the weather on Friday and over weekend into the open part of next year, high pressure grudge is slipping its way eastwards, pulling up these very hot southerly southeast winds. Again, as the upper air temperature plus 20 Celsius ice pump is pushing north to fungi low, beginning to develop there overnight, Monday into Tuesday. If a plus 20 Celsius ice pump up to northern England, almost southern Scotland, which is quite remarkable, really. Um, a fungi charter sitting over the country by the time it's through to the middle of next week will offer some relief. We'll start to cool the air down and we'll probably see heavy showers and storms breaking out with that thundery uh, area of low pressure. That low pressure includes the way to use by day 10. High pressure begins to build to our north and west once again. Uh, many more extreme rains. It's just a very warm, slack and thundery, uh, really, with high pressure to the north and a thundery area of low pressure to the west and southwest. So we're bringing the wind from the east. That would be very warm or hot still. Um, very slack gradients and probably 
quite thundery uh, with that. This is temperature forecast based on that GFS midnight run. Again, Sunday is a hot day, standard hot day. Uh, temperatures around 31, 32 or 33 degrees, widely across England. Uh, so, you know, that's standard hot weather. It's hot, but it's not anything exceptional. This is exceptional. This is Monday, 18th of July, where we've got widespread temperatures of 37, 36, 37, possibly 38 degrees here across eastern regions. General rule of thumb of each other, remember, is out on a couple of degrees. So if it's going to be like 37 there, um, uh, I mean, if you add a couple on, you get to 39, which would be... Uh, a record, that would be a record hot day, not all that far away from 40 degrees. So, you know, it's still a possibility, this. But I think they have probably backed off from 40 a little bit. But upper 30 is definitely looking possible. That's Tuesday, 19th of July. Again, widespread temperatures of like 35, 36, possibly 37 degrees. We're approaching 100 Fahrenheit there. Uh, with that, and uh, you know, it, the heat gradually just a little bit further north as well, so that's actually going for 37, uh, 38 I think there, across parts of eastern England so this is really, really hot stuff, uh, you know, through the early part of uh, next week, exceptionally hot, uh, so yeah, there's 6 there, again, looks like that high pressure is in the ascendancy as we go through the weekend into next week, that high pressure gradually drifting its way, east was pulling up these hot southerly southeast winds. That's how the upper air temperatures look. 6 a.m. on Monday, plus 20 south side so is across northern France. So the 6 a.m. possibly backing off uh, that extreme heat a little bit more. That's uh, 6 a.m. on Tuesday. Bungee low is developing across northern parts of France, still bringing up this hot southerly or southeast wind. Plus 20 south side so just into the far south and southwest. So beginning to limit the plus 20 south side for there. With the GFS uh, 6 at some degree. Uh, does look very fungy though, uh, with this trough of low pressure around the middle part of next week. And that gets out of the way, takes that heat away with it, and we pull wind into a cooler, fresher sort of north or northeast. It's second half next week, but still dominated by high pressure at least for a while. Into where it's in range, low pressure starts coming from off the Atlantic. That begins to bring uh, cloud wind and rain in from off the Atlantic. So, um, very different weather type there as we get into the last week of July. This is temperature forecast based on that. Uh, six edge GFS run. Again, uh, so it looks hot, not quite as hot as midnight run. But still up to around 31, that's 88 Fahrenheit, possibly 32 uh, with that. Hot today for Monday, the 18th of July, up into the mid-30s Celsius, 34, 35 degrees is possible. And then the hottest day is Tuesday, 19th of July, where we are getting up to 37 in the far south and southeast of the country. But the Jefferson is beginning to pull back a little bit on that very extreme heat, but it was forecast a couple of days ago where we would be up in the 40s. However, by then... Um, does have to be said, but like 40, 40, 41 degrees is only on the other side of the channel. So, I mean, it's not that far away at all. It remains to be seen just how extreme this is going to get. Right, if you enjoyed the video, can you uh, like, share, subscribe? Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We are on our way to 14,000 subscribers. We've reached 13.9k. So, please give us a sub, everyone. And thank you so much. Right, the GM, uh, looking like this, with high pressure once more in control of the weather over the weekend and into the early part of uh, next week. Two area of high pressure gradually easing its way east was pulling up this very hot southerly wind as we go into the open part of next week. As the upper air temperature midnight on Monday, plus 20 Celsius from is free there across many parts of England where it's certainly hotter with GFS 6 there. And we go rather slack by the time we get through to midnight on Tuesday. Again, upper air temperature looking extremely hot. The plus 20 Celsius from making it up into northern parts of England. Thundry trough then developing around the middle part of the week. Could bring some thunderstorms and be into the lower temperature as wind turns into more of a north or northeast thing. And then as we head up towards day 10, high pressure re-establishing from the Azores, taking us back to very warm and dry weather, albeit it would be fresher. And then the ECFWF looking like this once more, high pressure. So GM looks very hot uh, next week. Um, uh, ECM, again, high pressure dominates the weather through the weekend and into the early part of next week as well. High pressure gradually easing its way east was allowing the wind to go into the south and southeast early next week. That begins to pull up that very hot air. That's Tuesday. Again, we've got plus 20 Celsius isotherm through much of northern England. It's hotter than that across central some parts of England 
of Wales. So that's an extremely hot air match that we see there for the ECMW for the early part of next week. But he does turn fun tree and the ECM actually has more of a fun tree area of low pressure. It's not just a chop, an area of low pressure by the middle of next week that probably brings heavy showers and thunderstorms and then pulls in cooler air from off the Atlantic. So a fungi breakdown sweeps away that extreme heat as we go through into the middle part of next week. And um, for the second half of next week, you actually get wind into the north. That's probably quite cool. By Thursday, 23rd, it's probably going to be a little bit below average with the temperature for the north and northeast anyway, um, with that sort of northerly wind, especially if there's outbreaks of rain. By day 10, the high pressure begins to re-establish again from off, the, off the Atlantic from the Azores, and so that returns to uh, much drier and warmer conditions once more. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So further showery bursts in the north over the next few days, but mainly dry down in the south. Uh, and then, of course, we have those thunderstorms breaking out through the early part of next week. So thunderstorms could become widespread across uh, many parts of the country as they push their way northwards with that bungee breakdown before all of the wet weather gets out of way and we go back to dry conditions by day 10. This is the option on the table within the ECM ensemble to day 4, day 10, which gets us to the 22nd of July. 51 members out of the ECM ensemble, 51 out of 51, has high pressure over to West Country, mainly dry, and rather on the cool side with that, bringing the wind in from uh, northwest. Well, probably not cool, but, you know, cooler, cooler anyway, but extreme heat early, <laughs> early next week. It's probably still quite warm, actually. Um, by day 10, 27th of July, 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure to the north, pulling the high pressure away to the west. So probably turning more showery and rather cooler as well. Probably turning rather cooler and more showery uh, there by two weeks out. Uh, lastly, the CFSB2 means the 500 millibar high tolerance breaking down to week period. So first week period gets from the 12th to the 18th of July. So the coming week will be dominated by high pressure and we know it is going to get very hot. Week two is going to be the 19th to the 25th of July. High pressure then is just to our east, and we're pulling up a hot or a very hot southerly or southwesterly wind at that point. Week three is all changed. It's the 26th of July to the 1st of August, with a trough of low pressure right over the top of the country and across northern Mexico. Jetson is pushed southwards. So we're certainly turning much more unsettled there and probably quite a lot cooler as well. And then week four, which is going to be the 2nd to the 8th of August, has low pressure then to the north, high pressure around Spain. And we're probably left in a westerly type flow. So generally still quite mixed there, I think, for the first week of August and not overly warm. We'll see about that. Right, if you've enjoyed the video, bring up to date with all our latest relevance with Heatwave, then please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Drop a comment, let's say what you've got this and all of our videos. And don't forget to drop a comment and say hi to Abby. I know Abby would love it if uh, you could all say hello when uh, you uh, make your comments. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so we're done with today's video, so we're going to be back uh, tomorrow. It's about later on. We're going to be back tomorrow uh, with a 6 a.m. upload and a 10 to 14 day uh, as well. We may have a look at the JMA extended model uh, for our JMA Wednesday or something like that. That could be quite fun. Uh, but for this video, so that's all for now. For today's video, so this video, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.